This is a LibriVox recording, and all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. This is a recording by Kristen Luoma, GreenKRI.com. Aesop's Fables The Fox and the Stork A fox invited a stork to dinner, at which the only fare provided was a large, flat dish of soup. The fox lapped it up with great relish, but the stork, with her long bill, tried in vain to partake of the savory broth. Her evident distress caused the sly fox much amusement. But not long after the stork invited him in turn, and set before him a pitcher with a long and narrow neck into which she could get her bill with ease. Thus, while she enjoyed her dinner, the fox sat by hungry and helpless, for it was impossible for him to reach the tempting contents of the vessel. End of the Fox and the Stork This is a LibriVox recording, and all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. This is a recording by Kristen Luoma, GreenKRI.com. Aesop's Fables The Wolf in Sheep's Clothing A wolf resolved to disguise himself in order that he might prey upon a flock of sheep without fear of detection. So he clothed himself in a sheepskin, and slipped among the sheep when they were out at pasture. He completely deceived the shepherd, and when the flock was penned for the night he was shut in with the rest. But that very night, as it happened, the shepherd, requiring a supply of mutton for the table, laid hands on the wolf in mistake for a sheep, and killed him with his knife on the spot. End of the Wolf in Sheep's Clothing This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in January 2006. Aesop's Fables The Stag in the Ox Stall A stag, chased from his lair by the hounds, took refuge in a farmyard, and, entering a stable where a number of oxen were stalled, thrust himself under a pile of hay in a vacant stall, where he lay concealed, all but the tips of his horns. Presently one of the oxen said to him, "'What has induced you to come in here? Aren't you aware of the risk you are running of being captured by the herdsmen?' To which he replied, Pray, let me stay for the present. When night comes, I shall easily escape under cover of the dark. In the course of the afternoon, more than one of the farmhands came in to attend to the wants of the cattle, but not one of them noticed the presence of the stag, who accordingly began to congratulate himself on his escape and to express his gratitude to the oxen. We wish you well, said the one who had spoken before. "'But you are not out of danger yet. "'If the master comes, you will certainly be found out, "'for nothing ever escapes his keen eyes.' "'Presently, sure enough, in he came, "'and made a great to-do about the way the oxen were kept. "'The beasts are starving!' he cried. "'Here, give them more hay, and put plenty of litter under them.' "'As he spoke, he seized an armful himself.' from the pile where the stag lay concealed, and at once detected him. Calling his men, he had him seized at once, and killed for the table. End of the Stag in the Ox Stall This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, Please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in January 2006. Aesop's Fables The Milkmaid and Her Pail 
A farmer's daughter had been out to milk the cows, and was returning to the dairy, carrying her pail of milk upon her head. As she walked along, she fell, amusing after this fashion. The milk in this pail will provide me with cream, which I will make into butter and take to market to sell. With the money I will buy a number of eggs, and these, when hatched, will produce chickens, and by and by I shall have quite a large poultry yard. Then I shall sell some of my fowls, and with the money which they will bring in, I will buy myself a new gown, which I shall wear when I go to the fair, and all the young fellows will admire it, and come and make love to me. But I shall toss my head and have nothing to say to them. Forgetting all about the pail, and suiting the action to the word, she tossed her head. Down went the pail, all the milk was spilled, and all her fine castles in the air vanished in a moment. Do not count your chickens before they are hatched. End of the Milkmaid and Her Pail This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in January 2006. Aesop's Fables The Dolphins, the Whales, and the Sprat The Dolphins quarreled with the Whales, and before very long they began fighting with one another. The battle was very fierce, and had lasted some time without any sign of coming to an end, when a Sprat thought that perhaps he could stop it. So he stepped in and tried to persuade them to give up fighting and make friends. But one of the dolphins said to him contemptuously, We would rather go on fighting till we're all killed than be reconciled by a sprat like you. End of The Dolphins, The Whales, and The Sprat This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Fox and the Monkey An Aesop's Fable A fox and a monkey were on the road together, and fell into a dispute as to which of the two was the better born. They kept it up for some time, till they came to a place where the road passed through a cemetery full of monuments, when the monkey stopped and looked about him, and gave a great sigh. "'Why do you sigh?' said the fox. The monkey pointed to the tombs and replied, all the monuments that you see here were put up in honor of my forefathers, who in their day were eminent men. The fox was speechless for a moment, but quickly recovering, he said, Oh, don't stop at any lies, sir. You're quite safe. I'm sure none of your ancestors will rise up and expose you. The moral? Boasters brag most when they cannot be detected. This has been an audio recording of The Fox and the Monkey from Aesop's Fables, read by Andy Fluke of 13pennies.net for LibriVox.org. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Ass and the Lapdog An Aesop's Fable there was once a man who had an ass and a lapdog. The ass was housed in the stable with plenty of oats and hay to eat and was as well off as an ass could be. The little dog was made a great pet of by his master, who fondled him and often let him lie in his lap. And if he went out to dinner, he would bring back a tidbit or two to give him when he ran to meet him on his return. The ass had, it is true, a good deal of work to do, carting or grinding the corn or carrying the burdens of the farm, and ere long he became very jealous, contrasting his own life of labor with the ease and idleness of the lapdog. At last one day he broke his halter, and, frisking into the house just as his master sat down to dinner, he pranced and capered about, mimicking the frolics of the little favorite, upsetting the table and smashing the crockery with his clumsy efforts. Not content with that, he even tried to jump on his master's lap, as he had often seen the dog allowed to do. At that, the servants, 
seeing the danger their master was in, belabored the silly ass with sticks and cudgels and drove him back to his stable, half dead with his beating. Alas, he cried, all this I have brought on myself. Why could I not be satisfied with my natural and honorable position without wishing to imitate the ridiculous antics of that useless little lapdog? This has been an audio recording of The Ass and the Lapdog from Aesop's Fables, read by Andy Fluke of 13pennies.net for LibriVox.org. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Fir Tree and the Bramble, an Aesop's Fable. A fir tree was boasting to a bramble, and said, somewhat contemptuously, You poor creature, you are of no use whatsoever. Now look at me, I am useful for all sorts of things, particularly when men build houses. They can't do without me then. But the bramble replied, Oh, that's all very well, but you wait till they come with axes and saws to cut you down, and then you'll wish you were a bramble, and not a fir. The moral? Better poverty without a care than wealth with its many obligations. This has been an audio recording of The Fur and the Bramble from Aesop's Fables, read by Andy Fluke of 13pennies.net for LibriVox.org. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Frog's Complaint Against the Sun An Aesop's Fable Once upon a time, the sun was about to take himself a wife. The frogs in terror all raised their voices to the skies, and Jupiter, disturbed by the noise, asked them what they were croaking about. They replied, The sun is bad enough, even while he is single, drying up our marshes with his heat as he does. But what will become of us if he marries and begets other sons? This has been an audio recording of The Frog's Complaint Against the Sun from Aesop's Fables, read by Andy Fluke of 13pennies.net for LibriVox.org. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Dog, the Cock, and the Fox A dog and a cock became great friends and agreed to travel together. At nightfall, the cock flew up into the branches of a tree to roost, while the dog curled himself up inside the trunk, which was hollow. At break of day, the cock woke up and crew, as usual. A fox heard, and wishing to make breakfast of him, came and stood under the tree and begged him to come down. I should so like, said he, to make the acquaintance of one who has such a beautiful voice. The cock replied, Would you just wake my porter who sleeps at the foot of the tree? He'll open the door and let you in. The fox accordingly rapped on the trunk, when out rushed the dog and tore him into pieces. End of Aesop, The Dog, The Cock and the fox. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables The Gnat and the Bull A gnat alighted on one of the horns of a bull and remained sitting there for a considerable time. When it had rested sufficiently and was about to fly away, it said to the bull, Do you mind if I go now? The bull merely raised his eyes and remarked, without interest, It's all one to me. I didn't notice when you came, and I shan't know when you go away. We may often be of more consequence in our own eyes than in the eyes of our neighbors. End of Aesop's Fable, The Gnat and the Bull This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 
Aesop's Fables, The Bear and the Travelers Two travelers were on the road together when a bear suddenly appeared on the scene. Before he observed them, one made for a tree at the side of the road and climbed up into the branches and hid there. The other was not so nimble as his companion, and, as he could not escape, he threw himself on the ground and pretended to be dead. The bear came up and sniffed all around him, but he kept perfectly still and held his breath, for they say that a bear will not touch a dead body. The bear took him for a corpse and went away. When the coast was clear, the traveler in the tree came down and asked the other what it was the bear had whispered to him when he put his mouth to his ear. The other replied, He told me never again to travel with a friend who deserts you at the first sign of danger. Misfortune tests the sincerity of friendship. End of Aesop Fable The Bear and the Traveler This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Basil Monroe Gudevinus. B. Monroe. Studios.com. The Slave and the Lion. A Fable of Aesop. A slave ran away from his master, by whom he had been most cruelly treated, and in order to avoid capture, he took himself into the desert. As he wandered about in search of food and shelter, he came to a cave, which he entered and found to be unoccupied. Really, however, it was a lion's den, and almost immediately, to the horror of the wretched fugitive, the lion himself appeared. The man gave himself up for lost, but, to his utter astonishment, the lion, instead of springing upon him and devouring him, came and fawned upon him, at the same time whining and lifting up his paw. Observing it to be much swollen and inflamed, he examined it and found a large thorn embedded in the ball of the foot. He accordingly removed it and dressed the wound as well as he could, and in course of time it healed up completely. The lion's gratitude was unbounded. He looked upon the man as his friend, and they shared the cave for some time together. A day came, however, when the slave began to long for the society of his fellow men, and he bade farewell to the lion and returned to the town. Here he was presently recognized and carried off in chains to his former master, who resolved to make an example of him, and ordered that he should be thrown to the beasts at the next public spectacle in the theater. On the fatal day the beasts were loosed into the arena, and among the rest a lion of huge bulk and ferocious aspect. And then the wretched slave was cast in among them. What was the amazement of the spectators, when the lion, after one glance, bounded up to him and lay down at his feet with every expression of affection and delight, it was his old friend of the cave. The audience clamored that the slave's life should be spared, and the governor of the town, marveling at such gratitude and fidelity in a beast, decreed that both should receive their liberty. End of The Slave and the Lion Recorded January 24, 2006 In Newmarket, Ontario, Canada This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Basil Munro Gadevinas. B. Munro. Roe Studios. Com. The Flea and the Man. A Fable of Aesop. A flea bit a man, and bit him again, and again, till he could stand it no longer, but made a thorough search for it, and at last succeeded in catching it. Holding it between his finger and thumb, he said, or rather shouted, so angry was he, Who are you, pray, you wretched little creature, that you make so free with my person? The flea, terrified, whimpered in a weak little voice, Oh, sir, pray let me go. Don't kill me. I am such a little thing that I can't do you much harm. But the man laughed and said, I am going to kill you now, at once. Whatever is bad has got to be destroyed, no matter how slight the harm it does. Do not waste your pity on a scamp. End of The Flea and the Man Recorded on January 24, 2006 In Newmarket, Ontario, Canada This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Basil Monroe Gadevinus. 
bmunro.roestudios.com. The Bee and Jupiter, a fable of Aesop. A queen bee from Hymetus flew up to Olympus with some fresh honey from the hive as a present to Jupiter, who was so pleased with the gift that he promised to give her anything she liked to ask for. She said she would be very grateful if he would give stings to the bees to kill people who robbed them of their honey. Jupiter was greatly displeased with this request, for he loved mankind, but he had given his word, so he said that stings they should have. The stings he gave them, however, were of such a kind that whenever a bee stings a man, the sting is left in the wound, and the bee dies. Evil wishes, like fowls, come home to roost. End of The Bee and Jupiter Recorded on January 24, 2006, in Newmarket, Ontario, Canada This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Stone of Purling on the Dark Side in Denver, Colorado, USA. Aesop's Fables, The Oak and the Reeds An oak that grew on the bank of a river was uprooted by a severe gale of wind and thrown across the stream. It fell among some reeds growing by the water and said to them, How is it that you who are so frail and slender, have managed to weather the storm, whereas I, with all my strength, have been torn up by the roots and hurled into the river. You were stubborn, came the reply, and fought against the storm, which proved stronger than you. But we bow and yield to every breeze, and thus the gale passed harmlessly over our heads. End of the Oak and the Reeds This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Stone of Purling on the Dark Side in Denver, Colorado, USA. Aesop's Fables, The Blind Man and the Cub There once was a blind man who had so fine a sense of touch that when any animal was put into his hands, he could tell what it was by merely the feel of it. One day the cub of a wolf was put into his hands, and he was asked what it was. He felt it for some time, and then said, Indeed, I am not sure whether it is a wolf's cub or a fox's, but this I know. It would never do to trust it in a sheepfold. Evil tendencies are early shown. End of The Blind Man and the Cub this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Kim Stone of Purling on the Dark Side in Denver, Colorado, USA. Aesop's Fables, The Boy and the Snails A farmer's boy went looking for snails, and when he had picked up both his hands full, he set about making a fire at which to roast them for he meant to eat them. When it got well alight and the snails began to feel the heat, they gradually withdrew more and more into their shells with the hissing noise they always make when they do so. When the boy heard it, he said, You abandoned creatures! How can you find heart to whistle when your houses are burning? End of the Boy and the Snails This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Rainer Obgenrein. Aesop's Fables The Apes and the Two Travelers Two men were traveling together, one of whom never spoke the truth, whereas the other never told a lie. And they came in the course of their travels to the land of apes. The king of the apes, Hearing of their arrival, ordered them to be brought before him, and by way of impressing them with his magnificence, he received them sitting on a throne, while the apes, his subjects, were ranged in long rows on either side of him. When the travelers came into his presence, he asked them what they thought of him as a king. The lying traveler said, Sir, everyone must see that you are the most noble and mighty monarch. 
And what do you think of my subjects? continued the king. They, said the traveler, are in every way worthy of their royal master. The ape was so delighted with his answer that he gave him a very handsome present. The other traveler thought that if his companion was rewarded so splendidly for telling a lie, he himself would certainly receive a still greater reward for telling the truth. So, when the ape turned to him and said, And what, sir, is your opinion? He replied, I think you are a very fine ape, and all your subjects are fine apes too. The king of the apes was so enraged at his reply that he ordered him to be taken away and clawed to death. End of The Apes and the Two Travelers This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fable, The Ass and His Burdens A peddler who owned an ass one day bought a quantity of salt and loaded up his beast with as much as he could bear. On the way home, the ass stumbled as he was crossing a stream and fell into the water. The salt got thoroughly wetted, and much of it melted and drained away, so that, when he got on his legs again, the ass found his load had become much less heavy. His master, however, drove him back to town and bought more salt, which he added to what remained in the panniers, and started out again. No sooner had they reached a stream than the ass lay down in it and rose, as before, with a much lighter load. But his master detected the trick, and turning back once more, bought a large number of sponges and piled them on the back of the ass. When they came to the stream, the ass again lay down, but this time, as the sponges soaked up large quantities of water, he found, when he got up on his legs, that he had a bigger burden to carry than ever. You may play a good card once too often. End of The Ass and His Burdens Read by Patrick McNeil www.jacpat.com This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fable The Shepherd's Boy and the Wolf A shepherd's boy was tending his flock near a village and thought it would be great fun to coax the villagers by pretending that a wolf was attacking the sheep. So he shouted out, Wolf! Wolf! And when the people came running up, he laughed at them for their pain. He did this more than once, and every time the villagers found they had been hoaxed, for there was no wolf at all. At last a wolf really did come, and the boy cried, Wolf! Wolf! as loud as he could, but the people were so used to hearing him call that they took no notice of his cries for help. And so the wolf had it all his own way, and killed off sheep after sheep at his leisure. You cannot believe a liar even when he tells the truth. End of The Shepherd's Boy and the Wolf This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fables, The Fox and the Goat A fox fell into a well and was unable to get out again. By and by, a thirsty goat came by, and seeing the fox in the well, asked him if the water was good. Good, said the fox. It's the best water I ever tasted in all my life. Come down and try it yourself. The goat thought of nothing but the prospect of quenching his thirst, and jumped in at once. When he had had enough to drink, he looked about, like the fox, for some way of getting out, but could find none. Presently, the fox said, I have an idea. You stand on your hind legs and plant your forelegs firmly against the side of the well, and then I'll climb onto your back, and from there, by stepping on your horns, I can get out. And when I'm out, I'll help you out, too. The goat did as he was requested, and the fox climbed onto his back and so out of the well, and then he coolly walked away. The goat called loudly after him and reminded him of his promise to help him out. But the fox merely turned and said, If you had as much sense in your head as you have hair in your beard, you wouldn't have got into the well without making certain that you could get out again. Look before you leap. End of The Fox and the Goat This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Gesine in Valletta, January 2006. Aesop's Fables The Fisherman and the Sprat A fisherman cast his net into the sea, and when he drew it up again, it contained nothing but a single sprat that begged to be put back into the water. I'm only a little fish now, it said, but I shall grow big one day, and then if you come and catch me again, I shall be of some use to you. But the fisherman replied, Oh no, I shall keep you now I've got you. If I put you back, should I ever see you again? Not likely. End of The Fisherman and the Sprat This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Aesop's Fable, The Boasting Traveler A man once went abroad on his travels, and when he came home, he had wonderful tales to tell of the things he had done in foreign countries. Among other things, he said he had taken part in a jumping match at Rhodes, and had done a wonderful jump which no one could beat. Just go to Rhodes and ask them, he said. Everyone will tell you it's true. But one of those who were listening said, if you can jump as well as all that, we needn't go to Rhodes to prove it. Let's just imagine this is Rhodes for a minute, and now, jump. Deeds, not words. End of The Boasting Traveler. Read by Patrick McNeil, Bakersfield, California. www.jacpat.com This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Reading by Robert Garrison Aesop's Fables The Crab and His Mother An old crab said to her son, Why do you walk sideways like that, my son? You ought to walk straight. The young crab replied, Show me how, dear mother and I'll follow your example. The old crab tried, but tried in vain, and then saw how foolish she had been to find fault with her child. Moral, example is better than precept. End of Fable